This is the first of five videos sponsored by Medans, the Middle Eastern Dance Association of New Zealand. And in this video, I want to look at two terms that are used to describe uh, Egyptian professional ballet dancers in the past, namely Hawalam and Khawazi. You may have heard of this, you may have not, but let's explore. Hi, I'm Kashmir, and today I'm going to look at two terms for Egyptian professional ballet dancers that are used commonly by Western ballet dancers, namely Awala, the singular is Alma, and Gawazi, which is the same singular and plural. Now, when I first started ballet dancing, it was quite simple. The Awalam were the pure, the, the educated women who danced only for women. And the Gawazi, well, they were gypsies who danced on the street for anyone. Now, language news. Alma and Awalam start with an Ain, which is actually a glottal stop, ah. And Gawazi, starts with a grain and that's sort of like the French um, ah, it's right in the back of the throat it's not a G I will attempt to pronounce these words correctly but you'll probably find I slip into um, what most people say from time to time so it's not guazi it's quasi and the alma has got that uh at the front okay so Alma, pure, dance for women. Gwazi, gypsies, dance for anyone. There's a little bit of truth in the first one and probably a lot less in the second. Now, when it comes to Gwazi, most people will actually know of the Barnett Mazin, which is the Mazin girls, the Mazin sisters, actually two sisters and a, and a cousin these days, um, who are based in Luxor. And both Asha Ali and Morocco uh, recorded and documented their dance and their style is, is often taught at workshops. Are they gypsies? Mm. Well, Morocco uh, was speaking to, to the patriarch and among the things she learnt is that they, yes, they are. They're Sinti. Now, Morocco herself is Roma and Sinti is a different branch of, uh, comes from a different part of India. So at first blush, it looks like this may be correct. But we're talking about one family. And what's more, they've only been in Egypt for just over a hundred years. So we can't really go with this yet. So who else has done work on this? Well, there's uh, Edwina Nearing. She uh, published a, a large article in uh, Habibi many years ago, in the 1970s, which has been republished on Gilded Serpent. And it's worth actually going and having a look at this for yourself because I can't give it justice in a few minutes, so ha have a look online to, and read the whole article. She looked at both the Gawazi in Luxor and in Sambot, which is in uh, the, Dial the Nile Delta region, which is north of Cairo. And I'm just going to pick out a few things which I think could be interesting. One is when she spoke to Sami Yunus, who, is, uh, who was involved with the National Folkloric Troupe. So this is a person with a lot of experience. And he said, no, Gawazi aren't gypsies. It's a completely different word in Egyptian to mean gypsies. Gawazi just means a family of entertainers, of dancers. In another article, she um, points out that she was speaking to some other Egyptians, and they said much the same thing, that the word Gawazi just means dancer. However, her research did show that some other Gawazi do appear to be Sinti and uh, would have come from India, possibly through Persia, and they're found right throughout the, the Levant area and are, are entertainers. But we're talking about some, not necessarily all. And just a side issue here, she also says that when she did actually see the National Folkloric doing Khawazi dance, she was surprised at the, at the variety of moves and dances they did. And this matches up with what Denise Sinan also said, who said what's these days taught as Gawazi dance is a very small subset of, of what was, was taught. Habiba came to a similar conclusion. She felt that the Gawazi were not 
local and that they had come um, via Persia, possibly from India. So on one side we have Egyptians saying Guazia dances, on the other side we have American researchers saying no, 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 they're, they're gypsies. So are they actually looking for a more exotic um, provenance of these dances? Or is there actually something in it? So I'm going to leave that to you to think about for a while. We'll come back to it. There's a bit more information to come at the end. I want to swap now over and have a look at the Awalam. The term Awalam seems to have changed over time. Now this is how it is used by Europeans who saw the dance. There doesn't seem to be any Egyptian or Arabic descriptions of Awalam, or Gawazi for that matter, um, in the, in, the, in the past. However, pre-1850, Hawalam referred to um, learned women. They tended to be singers, not dancers, and they would entertain in the harem. So they'd, they'd entertain just for women, mostly with poetry and singing, but perhaps with a little dancing. The travellers also talked about lesser Hawalam, who apparently were women who actually danced more than sang. Van Newark, when she was speaking to the women in Muhammad Ali Street, found that they, so this is looking at um, late 20th century, they used the term Hawalam to refer to dancers who performed only for women. Whereas the same women, if they went downstairs and performed for the men, will be called artists. So it doesn't seem to be linked to actually what they did so much as who their, their clientele was. Ada Noor used the term Awalam to refer to actually the women of Muhammad Ali Street, basically professional dancers who weren't doing nightclub style. So we have quite a mix here. What's actually happening, I think, is that the, the term has actually changed over time. Initially, the Alma were not dancers. They were entertainers. They sang, they wrote and recited poetry, they composed and played music. They were high class and um, worked only for women. And when I say worked, we're looking at a bit of a euphemism here. It looks like the Alma probably were actually very highly trained slaves initially. In contrast, the Gawazi were public dancers and in some cases, public women. And in order to elevate their status over time, the Gawazi started using the term Awalam to describe themselves. When Catherine Fraser looked for the terms Awalam, Alma, Gawazi um, in uh, medieval and early Ottoman writings, she could find no evidence of it. So if it was used at all by Egyptians, it was used colloquially on the street, it was never actually used to describe dances and writing and there were other terms which actually described basically what we're talking about singers uh, singer dancers and dancers that there were actually terms but there were not awalam or guazi used as, as terms however there were different classes of entertainers and it wasn't so much their training although it was it was the employers so if you were employed by a high class person you were a high class entertainer if the same entertainer was actually employed down at the, the local care for at, an, at a validity wedding, they were a low class entertainer. So the, the, the class was actually by, uh, depending on who their client was, not actually necessarily on who their trainer was or what their background was. By the late 18th century in Egypt, there were three guilds for female entertainers. There were singers, there were dancers called Rachazin, who were dancers who had their own musicians, and there were plain old dancers. Again, the terms Awalam and the terms Gawazi were not used. There was also a completely separate guild for prostitutes. So even though people often associate dancers and prostitution, it was actually considered to be quite a distinct guild, at least in the late 18th century. Clear as mud. What I want you to take from this is that the two terms do have shades of difference of meaning. That the two terms have actually changed in meaning over time. 
and that possibly the only people who used these terms were European travellers until fairly recently. And finally, there isn't any real evidence that all Gwazi have always been non-Egyptian, even though currently some Gwazi would appear to be Sinti. Okay, so this came from Medats. They paid for this video. Thank you very much. If you would like to sponsor a video, feel free to contact me. Or if you'd just like to make a small donation, you can either use Give a Little, which I believe takes international credit cards, or PayPal. Uh, if, uh, there's more details on my website, www.valerox.nz, details below. Thank you.